prepper kitchen. So today I'm just piddling around the house. I have some squash. I have some tomatoes that came out of my garden on the dehydrator. I have a little bag of mixed vegetables on the dehydrator. I have some other things, some celery that's been in my freezer quite some time. I went ahead and blanched it and put it on the dehydrator. I have a whole lot more celery to do because I still have those four stalks that I bought um, to do. But this video today is about, guess what? Yes, it's about the meatloaf, meatloaf meatballs I told you I was going to be pressure canning. So I'm going to bring you along today and, and try real quick to um, show you what I'm doing. But you know me, hopefully I won't get to rambling on kind of like what I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I have, with me, I have 10 pounds of ground beef I picked up from the Sam's Club. I'm going to start off with half of it. just makes it easier to work with. Um, so let me get things set up, and I'll bring you back, and we'll get started. Okay, as you can see here, I cut the log in half, and I have half of it in my bowl, kind of like broken up. I'm going to set this to the side, because you're going to need, if you're going to do it like I do it, you use your own recipe. Y'all, um, you uh, feel free to use your own recipe when making this. This is just how I like mine. Everybody's meatloaf is different. Mine's kind of uh, really basic. But I'm going to need an onion and a bell pepper. So I'm going to get these this peeled and get it quartered up, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so now that I've got them you know, quartered up, and I halved up my onion because it wasn't a very big onion, I'm going to use my um, KitchenAid chopper. And I'm going to chop these up very fine. I'm not going to um, do that on camera because it's just going to drive your ears crazy. But it's going to be very fine. I'll show you the consistency of this when I get it finished. All right. As you see, it's chopped up really, really fine. Same thing with the onion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix these together. Give them a nice stir. And I'm going to use half of this mixture in this batch and the other half in the other batch. Unless I see that I need another onion and bell pepper, then of course I'll have to go to the store. But we can at least do this batch. All right. Now, like I said, this is a to your own preference when it comes to the seasonings and the taste that you like in your meatloaf. You do your own research when doing meatloaf. Meatloaf is typically not an approved method for canning. Um, so yeah, this is how I do it, or am going to do it. I have done meatloaf, and I have used egg, and I have used, um, breadcrumbs, and they are sitting on my shelf just as good as ever, but, um, this time I decided I'm just going to go ahead and leave out the egg and leave out the breadcrumbs. So to start off with, and I'm just using the swag method, so I don't have any exact measurements for you, so this is what I'm going to be using. All right, I'm going to put garlic powder. Probably, I don't know, two or three tablespoons. Some tonery, tony accessories. To my taste buds, probably about a table, a couple of tablespoons. And of course, Lowry seasoning, y'all. <coughs> Excuse me, getting choked up on the Low uh, Tonys. There is a DIY, thanks to Julie Pope. It's on my community post on how to make Tonys. I mean, Lowry, uh, Lowry season salt. Let me get it out of there. Please check that out, write it down, so you'll have it on hand when the time comes, because I'm going to tell you what, this cost me $4.12, I could not believe it. So you know what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be saving this when it's empty, I'm going to put my homemade right inside the same jar. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and dish out half, actually I'm going to put it all in there, I'm going to have to go to the store to do the other half. So that's one onion, one bell pepper. It's kind of a small onion. I'm just going to put a few dashes of some Worcestershire. I don't typically put Worcestershire in my meatloaf. I won't give it a shot this time. And because I usually use the Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of Italian seasoning in here. Not a lot because I know I'm not trying to make Italian meatballs. My number one favorite ingredient in meatloaf is, you guessed it, probably ketchup, y'all. Ketchup, ketchup, ketchup. So I'm just going to probably put about a, probably a cup, three quarters of a cup for this amount of meat. 
And I'm gonna get my hands in here and I'm gonna get this all mixed together and then I'm gonna bring you back. But before I get in there, I just decided I'm gonna add a little bit of the Nor's beef powder. Not a lot because I don't typically do it and I really do like my meatloaf. But I'm just gonna put a little bit in there to give it a little beefier taste. Now I'm about to get my hands in there and I'll bring you back. All right, there it is, I got it all mixed up. For this next step, it's gonna take some sitting down. So we're gonna go on over to the table. All right, as you can see, I have a sheet pan lined with aluminum foil. This is what I'm gonna be setting my meatballs on. And here is my meat. Um, I am doing the quart size jars. Um, I'm not trying to do these exact same size uh, because I want them different sizes so that they can fit into some nooks and crannies in the jar. The um, bulk of them I want to be kind of big though. Um, and then some smaller ones, like I said, to fill it in. So yeah, so let's just go ahead and we're gonna get to rolling. Let me see how do I, if I can figure out the best way to do this. I got about, I don't know. I'm gonna start off with about, a golf, bigger than a golf size ball, probably size and a half of the golf ball. And I'm gonna just continue on rolling these out. Like I said, some of these are gonna be bigger. Some of these are gonna be smaller. And I'll bring you back when I get these all rolled up and onto the sheet pan and I'll show them to you. All right, here we are. So I've got like seven rolls of you know pretty big ones and then just a couple of rows of smaller ones so i'm doing seven jars i'm trying to have at least six big meatballs I'm, i don't tend to use quart size jars so i'm not real familiar of how much of what fits in what i do know that um all these should fit easily into my seven jars so yep two rows uh seven rows of big ones and two rows of the smaller ones i'm gonna put these in a 400 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes I don't want to fully cook these, but I do want to cook them enough that some of the fat comes off of them. This is a 90-10, uh, pretty lean ground beef. Um, so yeah, I want to uh, get some of the fat off of it, not all of it, um, and prevent them from sticking together in the canning jar. So I'm going to get these in the oven, and when they come out, I will bring you back. All right, here they are out of the oven. I did drain off the um, liquid that was in the sheet pan. I'm gonna let these cool where I can handle them and um, get them jarred up and I'll bring you back when we're ready to get them into the jars. Okay, these are all cooled off and as you can see, my shirt is different. So there you go. I had to go into town. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna do a a cold canner we're going to start off with a cold canner so we're going to go over and we're going to get these in the jar and yeah so let's go on over to the other counter all right i have three quarts of water in the bottom of my canner i'm going to put a splash of vinegar in there just to keep the jars from clouding up and let's get set up over here so you can see what we're doing all right after getting this over here by my jars the i'm not even sure i have enough to fill all seven jars so this might be a half and half. I may have to um, offline um, go ahead and do the other batch up and get them in to fill it up. But we'll just have to see. Hopefully this is enough. So let's go ahead and let's get started filling the jars up. This first row I did is bigger than all the other ones. So I'm going to put one of these in each one of these jars to ensure that they each got one. All right, so let's start right here. See how, how we do. Go. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to do up the other batch, but you'll see me do this. And we'll pick up once I get the other ones done up and ready to go. And I am doing the dry canning method. So, all right, there's one. I'm going to continue through the rest of these, and I'll bring you back. All right, for what I had on my thing there, it got me five quart-sized jars. 
If y'all remember, I told you I'm not sure how much it will take to do quarts because I, I typically don't do quarts when I can. Um, it's mostly in the pint. But um, we're probably going to do up these five jars. And yeah, I'll bring you back. We'll either, either have them all canned up or I'll bring you back when the end of this load is done. So here we go. I'm going to place them in the canner. What you're not going to see going forward is I will go ahead and place these in the canner and um, pressure can them for 90 minutes for quarts. If you're doing these and you're doing them in the pints, it would be 75 minutes. And the next time you see me, I'll be done. All right, y'all. See y'all in a short. Okay, just want to let you know, I did decide to go ahead and go ahead and pressure can these five jars up. Um, because if I was to do the other half, it wouldn't be enough to, to fill up, um, I wouldn't be able to process them all in one canner. So, I'm doing these five and then I'll do the other ones, you know, by myself. Alright, so let's get these going. Okay guys, here they are all finished. Um, I went back to edit this uh, video to get it put up for y'all. And the footage where I took these out of the canner is gone. Um, luckily I had not taken care of them and put them away yet. But this is what it is. I got five quarts. Um... I love it, having meatballs, uh, meatloaf meatballs, that's a tongue twister for me, <laughs> meatloaf meatballs ready to go, because you know when you pressure can meatloaf or hamburger meat, um, it's already ground up or cooked up, and it's, it's, you can't make meatloaf out of it, so if you do it in advance, you'll be able to have meatloaf, and in a situation, a nice meatloaf sandwich, a meatloaf dinner would just be fantastic, I love meatloaf and so does my family, um, so yeah, um, five, uh, quarts is what I got. Um, y'all go ahead and make y'all some meatloaf balls. All right, y'all, please give this video a thumbs up. Um, leave any tips and tricks you have down below. And y'all keep on keeping on out there. I'll see y'all next time back at Linda's Prepper Kitchen. Bye, everyone.